It is so good to be here in the house of God. It is so good to have this opportunity to share God's word with all of you. Um, if you're a new preacher, I think one of the easiest and the best way to start preaching is to preach a, uh, on a sermon about, you know, being the light. I think that's like one of my first ones, uh, being the light. I think there's, the Bible is just full of examples on being the light. And today I wanted to preach just that sermon, not because it's easy to preach, not because um, th there's so many examples, but because I believe it's so relevant and because I believe we don't talk about it often enough, about being a light and being an example. And the title of my message today is The Fire from the Lord. If I was to ask you a question and say, are you a good example of Christianity and a relationship with God? If I was to look at you alone today, and based upon you judge Christianity, would you think, do you think that you would be a good example? Ask yourself that. Because as far as I'm concerned, and as far as I know, the Bible calls us to be a perfect example of Christ and imitators of Christ. Just like there's a song, just like, you know, the, the sun, the moon reflects the sun, so I should reflect Jesus. Uh, something along those lines. And so the question stands, if I was to look at you alone, do you think you would be a good representative of Christ? Matthew 5, 14 through 16 says, Matthew 5, 14 through 16, if you have your Bibles open with me. I'm reading from NLT tonight. And it says, You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. And when we read this last verse, in the same way, let your light shine before man or let your good deeds, in my translation, um, the, the question stands, it's like, isn't that prideful? Isn't it wrong to have your deeds, you know, stand out and, and be on display? Doesn't that lead to pride? Uh, am I wrong, wrong in, 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 in showing people what I do and, and, and through that, I guess, displaying the, the power of God or what God does in my life? And we'll talk more about it in a little bit. But what does it mean to be the light? What does it mean to be the light in your life? How can you be a light today? What does it mean to have your deeds shine before all men? I was looking for an example, and the best one I could find was an example of a lighthouse. Has anyone ever been to like a lighthouse or buy a lighthouse and seen one in real life? Come on, let me see your hand if you've been to one. There you go, almost everyone. And it's not surprising in Pacific Northwest. Uh, we have several. There's one in Discovery Park. There's one in uh, Browns Point, Tacoma. Um, I believe there's more. Um, but that being said, Lighthouse would probably be the best example of being a light in, in, in darkness, right? Imagine a ship that is going through a rough sea, right? The waves are kind of high and it's super misty and, uh, and the sky is dark. It's probably middle of the night. And on top of that, it's raining and it's foggy at the same time. And, and, and the ship... It knows a general direction of where it has to go, but but that's it. It just knows the general direction. And then in a distance, the, 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 the pilot at the wheel, and it's weird that we call him pilot, but, um, but that's what actually ancients called him uh, back in the day, because that was the only pilot. They didn't have planes. So the pilot at the wheel of the ship um, sees a very faint light glimpse in a distance. And instantly he knows where he is what that is and where he has to go and, and and the pilot you know he he um he navigates the ship in accordance with that light he he grabs the wheel tighter and he proceeds with more assurance he's not he's not guessing he's not looking around he he know he he begins to understand and and as he gets closer and closer and the light becomes brighter and brighter he knows where he's going he knows 
where he is. He sees the dangers around him because the light is there, right? And it's like sh shining the way forward. And, and it tells him where he is. And, and it tells him where he needs to go. This light is exactly what he needs. This is his help. This is his hope. This is his tool. This is his everything in making it safe to the shore. In the same way, I can ask you tonight, are you a lighthouse? Are you a lighthouse? And let me tell you, you are set ablaze when you're repented and when you made right with God, you are set ablaze by God, especially if you have the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I want to read to you from Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Acts 2, 1. On a day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And now pay attention to this. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. So a question comes up, are you a lighthouse? And I, and I want to say most assuredly, yes, you are a lighthouse, especially if you have the gift of the Holy Spirit. God has marked you. God has set you right, on the right path. God has indicated or shown you that you are His. And as His ambassador and as being a part of Christ and, and being on a mission for Christ, you represent all that He is. And, and the tongues of fire settled on each of one of them. Um, before modern lighthouses that no longer require a light, lighthouse keeper, they're all electronic now. I think there's only one lighthouse keeper in all of the United States and somewhere in Boston. I googled. Um, now, now they're all electronic. But back in the day, a job of a lighthouse keeper would be to keep the light going. He would constantly add more fuel or, or gasoline or coal or whatever they burn. Uh, just imagine like a candle, right? He would constantly make sure that that candle is lit up, especially at night, yeah, especially during a storm. And uh, you are a lighthouse that is shining for these little boats that are trying to make it to the shore. All the people that are around you, maybe at your work, maybe at your school, maybe even here at youth, uh, anywhere you go, anyone you talk to, those are those are boats in the water. And you have influence, you have impact on their lives. And it's so important that that light would not be just, you know, some fake sparks about something that isn't true. That that light would be exactly pointing the right way, indicating the dangers, and, 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 and helping the people find where they are and where they need to be. Because this world is dark, right? Who agrees that this world world is dark? We can all agree on that. And it's, it's, it's dark as that night. And, and like the lies of the world, they're like this fog and, and, and all these things that they teach us, right? False ideologies and ideas that are like imposed on you. It's like this heavy rain that's falling down on you. And in all these circumstances, it is so difficult to navigate, to find a true way. And you can almost imagine these people asking, you know, Where's your light, lighthouse? Where do I go? Where is the true way? Uh, what do I avoid? And will I crash into the cliff and flounder? Or, or, or will I find a safe harbor? Where is the light? And I want to ask you today, if you couldn't say that, yes, I am a perfect example of Christianity, or yes, at least I'm close. If you couldn't say that today, then maybe... Maybe you need to change a few things around. Maybe you actually need to turn your candle on, light it up. Maybe you need to live for the right purpose in order for people to start seeing that, yes, there's something greater. Because let me tell you, the true light is attractive. Imagine walking in the darkness and you see a glimpse of light. You're lost in a cave or, or a building came down. doesn't matter. But you see a glimpse of light. Isn't that hope? Isn't that reassuring? Don't you want to run to it? Do you want to get out? A little bit of light is, 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 is so attractive. And people, they need you to show them the way. But sometimes we're distracted. 
and our eyes on the wrong thing. I'm going to read from Matthew 6.23. Those of you that have your Bibles, let's open Matthew 6.23, NLT translation. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. When your eye is unhealthy, that means when your eyes don't work. Your whole body is dark. Does that make sense? So you're blind. If then light within you is darkness, and my translation says, if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. I was, I was in school, and I remember my teacher, back when it was politically correct to ask what your religion is, he asked every single person in the class to stand up, tell him your name, tell him where you're from, blah, 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 and, and what you believe. And I kid you not, almost half, I would say like 40% of my class said, Christian. And it's great that they said Christian, and they made me feel kind of proud. And I was actually surprised and amazed. I was like, wow, that's a lot of Christians in my class. But based upon their deeds through the year, I found out they're not representing Christianity at all. At least most of them. And I was deeply disappointed. Uh, if I was to compare, uh, compare it to another example, I'm going to use a little, little video on you guys. Do you guys mind? A little video on you guys. Um, has anybody seen Nemo? Yeah, all right. Well, do you guys remember that fishy with the light? This is how, this is some, um, this is how, let's crank the lights down and I'll tell you when to play it. This is how, this is how some people shine their light. Some people are shining their fake light. They're, they're sending fake sparks and they're saying, you know, the treasure is here. Run after money. The treasure is here. Run after popularity. The treasure is here. It's all in the relationship with the boyfriend, the girlfriend. It's all here. And they're shining this fake light. Fake light. And what happens is we crash. Let's play the video since the lights are out already. Wait, do you see anything? Ah! Something's got me. That was me. I'm sorry. <gasps> Who's that? Who's that? Who could it be? It's me. Are, are you my conscience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm your conscience. We haven't spoken for a while. How are you? Can't complain. Yeah, good. Now, Dory, I want you to tell me. Do you see anything? I see a... I see a light. A light? Pixels, yeah. too. Over there. Hey, conscience, am I dead? No, I, I, I see it, too. What is it? It's so pretty. I, I'm feeling happy, which is a big deal for me. I want to touch it. Oh. Hey, come back. <laughs> come on back here. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to swim with you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to be your best friend. Good feelings gone. There we go. Let's crank the lights back on. The point that I was trying to bring to you guys through this little video, a funny cartoon that is, is that sometimes that's the light we pursue and we think it's great. We think that fame or money is going to get us happiness. After all, money can buy anything, right? Anything? How about eternity? How about your soul? I don't think so. So where I'm leading is, um, my class said, or my class claimed that 40% of them are Christians. And then they started doing things that were absolutely not representing Christianity. Things that weren't absolutely not acceptable. Going to parties. Swearing, getting kicked out of class all the time. I'm like, man, I don't know if I, this guy said he's Christian, but he definitely ain't. I just can't tell. I just can't tell. And I'm not the one to judge, but it seems like they're 
representation of Christianity is so false that if I was to judge Christianity solely on that one person, I would be so disappointed in Christianity and God. I would never want anything to do with it. And then I start to wonder, most people actually see people like that that claim they're Christians and then, then they think that's Christianity. That it's no different. That it's just a little thingy you believe and then you put back on the closet and you just take it out every Sunday, right? Dust it off. But then, <laughs> um, let's keep going. So what I was saying is this divine spark, this true light, being a true Christian, it is attractive. Just like a light was attractive to those two uh, fishies, um, but they weren't pursuing the right light. God's true light is also attractive. And people, people notice it. People, people want it. People want it when it's display, dis, displayed properly. They want it. They ask for it. They look for it. They get curious and, and they dive right in both feet. Everyone's looking for God. Everyone's looking for the truth. Think about it. In all the spheres of life, everyone's looking for the truth, aren't they? The scientists are looking for some kind of truth. People who, who spend hours and hours educating themselves, they're looking for some kind of truth. People, people who, who are only pursuing money in business, they're also looking for some kind of truth and some kind of satisfaction. Everyone in the entire world is looking for Jesus and they don't even know it. And now you know the true way. You know what that makes you? It makes you a lighthouse on a hill that knows the way. And all you have to do is display a little bit of light, display a little bit of, of direction, uh, be a little bit attractive, and, and you will appear in a dark world through all the ideologies, through all the hardships, through all the problems, through all the distractions, you will, you will appear on the horizon. They're going to notice, wow, I see, I see a little light. And, and, and I want to follow that. I, I, why are they always so happy? Why is everything great in their life? And, and, uh, and when, when everything's not great, they still have a reason to smile. And what is this person? Why are they so friendly? And they're not proud, even though they're six. You know, what is this? And they start seeing the, the true, and, and then you slowly introduce them to God. This is your job. Your job is to shine Jesus in your daily walk. That means be humble, be kind, be responsible, be honest, joyful, sincere, encouraging, courageous, speak the truth, respect one another, especially those in charge of you, and, and seek the good, good of others, so on. I can go on forever. These are the qualities of a true light, and a true light is super, super attractive. That's what it means when, uh, remember earlier we read, it said, in the same way, let your good deeds shine for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. This is what it means. That means you're living a life of a Christian. That means you have all the right characteristics. And when people notice that, they want it. They want to encounter this light. So am I a lighthouse? I will say absolutely. Are you a lighthouse? Absolutely. If you know Jesus, you are a lighthouse. And you have no excuse to stand there idle and not shine. You have no excuse to turn your light off at all. You must be involved. You must be saving people because people's life is running out. It's, it's, it's almost like I'm comparing it like they're going to hit the cliff anyway. Right? They're going to hit the cliff anyway. But you can show them the way at least a little bit. And maybe just maybe they'll find their way home. You can plant the seed in their life by saying Jesus loves you, by, by encouraging them, by, by, by showing them the way. And... and Maybe you won't lead them all the way through. And you know what? It's not your job to save people. Did you know? Jesus saves. Holy Spirit saves. The Holy Spirit convicts. Your job is to plant the seeds. How is that hard? If you truly follow Jesus and all these things are displayed in your life, you're already sowing seeds. You don't even have to try. And when they ask you, always be ready to give account for the faith and the hope that is in you right? It's so easy if you're actually living
the life of the light. You, you're already preaching. And, and one of the scriptures says, you're a letter that's been read by all men. Everybody's reading you at all times. So today, you're given a responsibility. And your responsibility, especially leaders and ministers, especially, you know, like worship team and media team and hospitality team and wherever you are, and even those, you know, th that are not involved or busy here, you have influence Every single place you go, you have influence, you have impact on people's lives. And then you encounter, you know, a friend, and he's laughing at something that he shouldn't be laughing at, and you just laugh along. That's you encouraging bad behavior. And then he's saying something he shouldn't say, and, 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 and you not only disapprove, you, you approve of it, and you nod, and everything is great. That's not shining the light. And there's hundreds more examples that you can come up with out of your own life. And I can come up out of mine. Where I've screwed up. What I've done things wrong. What I should have stood firm and truth and in truth. But, but I've screwed up and I'm sure all of us have made mistakes, right? Is anybody here a perfect beacon of Christianity? I don't think so. <laughs> right? But we must... We must try. We must achieve this, this goal of, of, of reflecting Jesus everywhere we go. We, we must be a reflection of Jesus. We're his ambassadors. So, all of us are given a role. Did you know that our God absolutely doesn't ever make mistakes? Did you know that our God never changes? I mean, if you were the most perfect form of yourself, would you ever want to change? Well, God is perfect. He doesn't want to change. And, and, and because God is perfect, he, he doesn't create anything imperfect. You, you are created perfect. And, and because God is a God of purpose, you have a purpose. Now, obviously, we screwed up along the way ourselves. Obviously, we messed up on our own. And that makes us imperfect. But God... Gave you a purpose and a direction. That's cool. We're going to let people worship too. No problem. God gave you a purpose and direction. God gave you a role in your life. And I want to look into a story in the Bible where God gave somebody a purpose and direction in life. And if you open to Exodus 30.30, 30, Exodus 30.30, 30, I think that's where it is. It says the following. I anoint Aaron, a Aaron, I anoint Aaron and his sons also, consecrating them to serve me as priests. In other words, God is telling Moses, anoint Aaron, your brother, and his sons, so that they would be my priests, so that they would serve me. And did you know that with every title comes responsibility? Who did not know that? With every title comes responsibility. You don't give somebody a gun and call them a policeman and then they do, do nothing but eat donuts, right? They got to go and actually police the streets. You don't give judge a hammer and just expect them to sit there and laugh at all the cases and pick out funny stories, but do nothing. The judge has to do his job. And because Aaron and his sons got titles of priests, with that came responsibility. With being a leader here comes responsibility. Being in the worship team here comes responsibility. Being an impact group comes responsibility. With everything you do and every title you get and, and everything in life, there is responsibility. And God's given you a responsibility just like he gave a responsibility to Aaron and his sons. And the sons of Aaron were named Nadab and Abihu. And this is what the Lord wanted from them. Then the Lord said to Moses, this is Leviticus chapter 6, verse 8 through 13. Leviticus 6, 8 through 13. Then the Lord said to Moses, give Aaron and his sons the following instructions regarding the, uh, regard, regarding the burnt offering. The burnt offering must be left on top of the altar until the next morning. And the fire on the altar must be kept burning all night. And I want to underline that verse. The fire must be kept burning on the altar. 
Here it says all night in my translation. In the morning after the priest on duty had put out put on his official linen clothing and linen undergarments, he must clean out the ashes of the burnt offering and put them beside the altar. Then he must take off these garments, change back into his regular clothes, and carry the ashes outside the camp to a place that is ceremonially clean. Meanwhile, the fire on the altar must be kept burning. It must never go out. Each morning the priest will add fresh wood to the fire and arrange the burnt offering on it. He will then burn the fat of the peace offering on it. Remember, next verse, remember, the fire must be kept burning on the altar continuously. It must not go out. Did you guys notice that God is trying to say something here? Like three times in a row? In the last five verses, he kept saying, the fire must never go out. God dedicated these people, gave them a responsibility, consecrated them. And then he gave them instructions and he said, the fire must never go out. If I was to make an example, I would say that these people were the lighthouse keepers. Would you guys agree? The people that always keep the fire burning. These guys right here, they're the lighthouse keepers. They're keeping the fire going. They're making sure that it's always on. If I could have somebody on the keys, we're going to go into prayer here shortly. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1 through 3. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1 through 3 says, Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, put coals of fire in their incense burners and sprinkled incense over them. In this way, in this way, they disobeyed the Lord by burning before him the wrong kind of fire, different that he had commanded. unauthorized fire it says right there before the Lord contrary to the, to the Lord's command so fire blazed from uh, forth from the Lord's presence and burned them up and they died before the Lord then Moses said to Aaron this is what the Lord meant when he said I will display my holiness through those who come near me I will display my glory before all the people this is a uh, a little bit of sad story because it says that Aaron just stood silent. He couldn't really talk. His sons just died. I mean, it must be hard. And God didn't even allow Aaron to mourn his son other than the family was allowed. But the lesson I want to get out of this is that we must keep the fire going. And it can't be a fake fire. It can't be, it can't be, you can't be telling people that it's, that, that the pursuit of, of finances is, is the goal of life because you know better. You can't be going and advertising that, that, you know, fitness is the goal of life because you know better. You can't be going and advertising to people that, that the fame or, or your boyfriend, girlfriend, that's the goal of life because you know better. If you know better, then you must tell them the truth. Otherwise you're a fake light. And do you know what God do, does with unauthorized fire? Do you know what God does with fire that isn't His? He burns it away. Anybody want to guess where that's going to be for, for people who disobey God? Do not look for your own way. Do not look for your own fire. Did God not give, give us clear instructions on what we must do? Anybody's at a loss? We have the Great Commission where we got to go and save the world. we got to go and save people around us. And, and, and you don't have to like take on the burden of the entire world. Jesus picked 12 people and with those 12 people, He changed the, the world as we know it, right? Just work in the sphere and have influence and impact in a little circle that God has given you. I'm not trying to go and tackle the world. I am my impact group and I love those guys to death and some of the leaders here you have your impact groups that's your sphere and if you go to an impact group and, and grow up to be a leader you want to you want to have your own sphere but you're already in a sphere if you're an impact group and if you're not 
You're still, you're still here at church. This is also a sphere. You're still at work. That's a sphere. You're still in school. You're still everywhere else, inside your ho- house, everywhere you go. You have an opportunity to be the light, to do the right thing, to, to, to shine like Jesus shone. And um, Revelation 21.8 says, The cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in a fiery lake of burning sulfur. And I don't want us to be one of those. You know, the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the liars. Because honestly, if you're not showing people the true way, but you know it, you are a liar. And if you're not showing it because you think you're, you, you, they're not going to think you're cool now, then you're a coward. And the scripture says very clearly that these people, the cowardly, those who don't believe, those who are vile, the liars, and, and many more, they will not go to heaven. Now we want to go to heaven. We want to be in the presence of God. We want to enjoy the presence of God and, and live a life that never ends with a new body and, and a new name and, and a city that is new and glorious. And if you've been to Lex Collective, you know all about it. Uh, that's where you want to be. Where you don't want to be is in a lake, fire, and sulfur. I want to talk to you a little bit about having a purpose. Uh, Sophia, you can prepare the next video. I'm going to show you a quick video. But I want to talk to you about having a purpose in the Lord. Having a purpose. Your purpose is to be the light. And your purpose is to pursue Jesus with all you have. Run as fast as those feet can move you. Don't waste your time because time is short. Sometimes time is, 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 is too short for some people, right? If you were here on a conference on Sunday, you heard... Uh, brother Anatoly talk about his son. I remember that day. I was with Vitaly and Mike. They were at my house and they got a phone call that Anatoly lost his son. That his son just fell off a rattlesnake ledge. Um, and um, we were driving there to, to find him because people couldn't find him for hours. And about halfway there, we received a phone call that they found him and uh, he's gone. He was like a week away from 17. Uh, I think that's what I'm totally said. That, that's really sad. You don't know how much time you got. So I want to tell you, if you run after the Lord with all that you have, do you not think the Lord will respond? Do you not think the Lord will give you even something greater? If you're faithful and little, do you not think God will put you up on a bigger purpose? And I want you to start playing that video. This is a conference called Descend. There were 70,000 people there. And I know this this Dennis guy, and some of you probably seen the video. I know Dennis, I just, I was messaging him during during camp when we were at camp. The, he's, he's a great guy now. I'm not close friends with him, but Dennis has been a missionary in China, working in an orphanage. He, he His parents met here in America. He lived in Pennsylvania. His parents divorced there. He moved here for a little while, and then, and then he moved back to Pennsylvania. Right now he's still in China. He, he just came for the conference. And you will see when you pursue God with all of your heart, how God will call you to greater things. And I want you to be encouraged to this video because I was greatly encouraged. Let's play it. Sean, would you come? Would you come? I believe God wants to raise up modern day prophets, everyday people who hear the voice of God. So we just prayed for signs and wonders and healings, but I want to pray out of 1 Corinthians 14, 1, where Paul says, eagerly go after love like your life depends on it and desire prophecy because prophecy connects us to love so quickly. What happens in 25 counseling appointments can happen instantaneously. What happens in 10 life coaching appointments can happen instantly. And so I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray that I'm going to model it just real quick, hopefully. And then I'm praying, I'll at least model taking a risk, if nothing else. So I want you to just put your hand on your heart because we all need to hear him more. If you already hear God, we're going to ask him to upgrade it, to make it more clear. If you don't hear from God today, I'm telling you, you came here, you heard from God. So now we just wanted to add to it. So Holy Spirit, I pray over everyone who is within my, my voice. 
with an ear of my voice to get an impartation of hearing your voice. John 10, 10, all your sheep hear your voice. And we pray that the prophetic anointing of words and knowledge, Lord, the prophetic anointing of prophecy, of words of wisdom would increase all over this place right now. We pray for new modern day prophets who are 12 years old, 25 years old, 80 years old, men, women, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, all of them gone. Now I'm going to practice, and this is so nerve wracking, I'm just being honest, I, we've all sweat off our deodorant though, so it's okay. Um, and you're going to have to help me. So I'm going to give a couple, what I call Holy Spirit nudges or indicators. And then you, if it's you, you're going to have to wave. No one else wave. And then if it's really you, everybody else has to start pointing. And we're going to see it on the camera. And I'm looking for a dentist who you're either from the Ukraine or your parents were. And you moved to America. And I think to Washington State or Washington, D.C., there's a dentist who your parents were from the Ukraine. You moved into America. Help me out here. Is there a dentist? We've only done this in stadiums this big a few times. So it's a little hard. We have somebody. We have, thank God. Thank you, Dennis, for listening to God and showing up. Is there a screen I can see? Or I can't even see a screen, I guess. Here, let me walk way out here and almost fall off the stage. This is good. Dennis, you're here. Good. I can see a little bit. Dennis, the Lord, the Lord himself has been walking with you since you were a little boy. And you had a hard time there in the middle because of some of the things that happened in your family. But it's gonna give you the power over divorce and broken families and adoption and foster care. And the Lord is saying, he's raising you up. That there's something you're called to build of an awakening movement, an awakening movement, something on the East Coast. I think you're on the West Coast, but you're gonna be on the East Coast. Apparently it's happening on the East Coast. And I just see like um, um, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. And God is saying he's awakening something in Pennsylvania and he's calling you to lead a movement, a movement. My Dennis, there you are. And Dennis, I'll tell you this, I have to face you and face you two ways. I don't know how to do this. But I'm telling you, your, your, your heritage in Eastern Europe, God is going to send you not only to America, but he's going to send you to North America. He's going to send you to South America, but he's going to commission you, not just send you, but commission you over the Ukraine and Eastern Europe. And something's going to happen like you can't even dream of. He's putting you right now on the highest lampstand that you can shine from. And it's your time, brother. It's your time. Wow. I hope you were encouraged. Isn't that amazing? And the church that brother Dennis went to is called Global Awakening in Pennsylvania. And wow, when I heard about that, and it was this was in Orlando, there were like 70,000 people, and God just calls one person, and wow. And I'm thinking, man, I'm spending so much time right and left on doing things that don't even matter, right? people are dedicating their entire life and I'm like Lord you're gonna raise up this ministry too and, and you don't have to speak to me in the crowd of 70,000 that I know father that he's gonna raise this youth up and he's gonna raise leaders here too and we're also gonna go places and we're also gonna do things for him and they're gonna be great and amazing things and we could all stay